When it comes to installing radiators, there's a few things you need to know. Um, you can't just go purchase a radiator and put it in and think it's gonna work. You need to know what size you need, and you also need to know what horsepower you're running. Uh, and the last thing you wanna do is spend a bunch of money on a radiator and then not um, keep your engine cool, and then you have cooling issues or overheating issues. So it's not gonna be good, especially on the trail when you're not getting any airflow except for the fan that you have. So when it comes to horsepower, you should know what horsepower you're running. If not, you should be able to look it up unless your engine has been modified. In my case, I know I'm gonna run a supercharger, at least that's my plan, uh, is to keep the inline six and just go with the supercharger. So the radiator I chose is good for a little over 300 horsepower, which will be more than enough. The next thing you need to know is what size. So when you find the radiator that you like, look up what the size is, mock it out of cardboard, stick it in the engine bay, and see what kind of room you got to play with. The width is very important because you do not want this thing touching the engine because the engine does obviously move um, with the torque. So you want to make sure that it's not in the um, radiator at all to where it's going to bend it or worse, uh, crack it. The next thing is you need to make sure the height is okay. What you don't want is this radiator sticking way down um, and then either hitting the pitman arm or hitting some type of your suspension. So once you have that figured out, you can go and purchase the radiator. The next thing is gonna be mounting. Some radiators come with mounting tabs. The one I ordered does not. Um, from Griffin, it's just a basic um, no mount radiator. The reason I chose this one though is because it's really small. It's 22 inches wide and only 15 inches high. But the most important thing when you're mounting a radiator is that you do not hard mount it to the body or to the frame. So what you wanna do is get some rubber bushings. I picked up some generic rubber bushings. They're nothing special. They're not even for the Jeep TJ. But what you want is something that the radiator can actually move around with, especially with all the vibrations and twisting that you're gonna get from an off-road vehicle. Um, if you hard mount it, you take a risk of actually cracking the radiator on the trail, which would be really bad because you're either gonna have to somehow repair it or buy a completely new radiator. So when it comes to any time I cut aluminum and then I try to bend it, since I do not have a bender, um, the easiest way is to just take your grinder and just score this. And I'm literally talking like a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and the easiest way to get a straight line with a grinder is don't go like this. Just take it and just walk with it, just real quick. Um, you need to go forward or back, whatever um, you feel comfortable with, but you just need to do it quickly. Um, the worst thing you could do uh, when trying to make a straight line with a grinder is just go like this. What you're going to do is end up crisscrossing that line and then either make it wider or actually get off track. So what I like to do is I always go from the back and I just let that grinder just kind of ride down the metal real quick and I do not stop whatsoever. Um, I just follow my line real quick and it usually works out pretty good. And then when you take that line, um, if I had a line right here to cut, flip it over and then line the edge of the table up with that line underneath. So you just have to look underneath there. And then that's how I use it. I just bend it. And what this does is it makes that line the weakest point. So it's obviously gonna bend there. And as long as your line is perfectly straight, then that bend is gonna look perfectly straight as well. All right, so I got my two mounts mounted in there. Next thing I wanna do is do a piece of flat on top. Um, I'm not sure, I don't have a bead roller, otherwise I'd put some kind of design here, but I do have my dimple dies, so I might use those just to strengthen this piece so it's a little bit stronger. Um, but anytime you're doing this type of work, any kind of fabrication stuff, it's always a good idea to cut it out with cardboard and make sure everything lines up and trace that out on metal.
right, so installation is complete. This is actually pretty easy to do um, with some basic hand tools. Now I went ahead and also installed a overflow tank. So that's all set. And then I also um, hooked up the radiator hoses. Now I went ahead and did a um, non-AC belt because that belt runs right between them pulleys. And if I would have went with a regular AC belt like I had before, that belt would have been touching the radiator hose. Um, so I went ahead and got rid of that. It's actually a pretty small hose now also. On the bottom, I didn't show really how I did that. It's just some small brackets. Um, I mounted it the same exact way as I did the top. The only difference is I didn't do the full piece of aluminum. And the reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want it up against the grill where I did those dimple dies. It wouldn't be flush and then it also is going to keep a bunch of mud and stuff in there. So that way stuff can still fall out there. If you guys have any questions, any comments, let me know. Hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.